Um, so my name is Tom Arnfeld, and I work for a company called Doodle. Um, I'm a software engineer there. Uh, and I want to talk briefly about uh, Portainer, um, which is a framework for building uh, Docker images on top of a Mesos cluster. Um, so I'm going to tell you uh, briefly why uh, this exists and why it's a thing for us. Um, so we were building quite a lot of images regularly. So as we started using uh, Mesos more and more and using Docker as a way of uh, isolating uh, the processes we were running, uh, we kept building more and more of them for things like continuous integration, continuous delivery, testing, um, and uh, we started to have a few issues. So um, we built Portainer to help solve those. Um, we also wanted to have faster builds. So for example, if you're compiling, say, Mesos from source, it can take a few minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, if you're running it on your Mac, it might take half an hour, or it used to take half an hour. Um, so maybe you want to run builds faster remotely. Um, so that was one, one thing. Uh, and also we wanted more consistent build environments. So I don't know if anyone, uh, who here actually builds Docker containers regularly? Uh, awesome. How many people have a really great experience with a really consistent build environment every time they build it? Cool, great, yeah. So that was an issue for us. Um, so we wanted to have really consistent reproducible environments every time. So uh, one uh, thing that we tried out was to use Jenkins. Uh, we were using Jenkins anyway to schedule uh, various different things. Um, so we started uh, having parameterized Jenkins jobs for the builds, and it would download the code base, do a Docker build, push it up, um, and there were great plugins for continuous integration. Um, and you can get some fault tolerance with builds because you have many slaves potentially that could be doing the builds. So if you lose a slave, the build potentially can run elsewhere. Um, it kind of worked for a while. So we ran with this setup for about a year. Um, and we ran into a few issues. So the biggest one was that the built images obviously accumulate uh, quite a lot of disk, uh, especially if you're building uh, large images for large projects, you can consume gigabytes of disk. Um, and how you clean those up is a very difficult problem. Um, because if you're building images concurrently, you're sharing layers potentially between lots of images, and those layers are being used while your builds are happening. So how do you clean those up uh, in a consistent way is, is quite a challenge. Um, there are now some newer tools, I believe, to solve this, kind of. Uh, but this was a while back. Um, the, uh, the other main thing, which is why um, we looked at Mesos, was uh, if you're doing lots of big builds, you want to have big machines. Um, but you're probably not building images all the time. So you end up with quite a few uh, slaves that are potentially underutilized. Um, we had this, so we had a couple of, um, uh, of Jenkins slaves that were doing builds, and when we were doing lots of builds, we wanted those to go through. But overnight, for example, people weren't pushing code, so the build machines were just sitting doing nothing. Um, and there's also less opportunity uh, with the Jenkins setup to improve fa failure handling. So for example, with Jenkins, uh, if a slave dies, the, the build is going to fail. So maybe you want to retry it somewhere else if you know that it's a failure that you can kind of restart. Um, so yeah, so we looked at using um, Docker and Mesos, um, and Portainer was kind of born as an experiment, really, to start with. Um, so yeah, so it's an Apache Mesos framework uh, built in Python for building, uh, building Docker images. Uh, and it creates consistent isolated environments for the builds uh, by using uh, Docker in Docker, which uh, it is optional, but it works particularly well. Um, there's no additional resources, so we managed to just completely shut down those slaves that we were using for builds because we already had Mesos clusters uh, that were doing other, other workloads, um, and we can just use the leftover capacity for, um, uh, for builds. And that has become more of an issue um, as we have larger jobs that consume the cluster entirely for long periods of time where builds don't go through. And actually, one of the things that I'm interested in experimenting with is um, the new quotas feature that was uh, starting to be worked on by some guys um, so that we can have uh, kind of dedicated uh, resources just somewhere in the cluster for us to be able to build uh, some images in a queue. Um, and also the logs from your Docker build are streamed back to the client. So one of the really important things with this process is that you need to be able to see uh, potentially for debugging issues later or understanding what's happening, uh, the logs from your build. So it streams those straight to the client um, automatically, which is nice. So I want to talk just quickly, roughly, um, how it works. So we have the Portata framework um, and the Mesos agent. Uh, and in our case, we're using Docker completely across the cluster. So there's a Docker daemon running on that host. Um, you say to Portainer, oh, I want to build this image, um, and it will launch an executor on the, uh, on the agent, uh, and it will start a Docker daemon inside the container. Um, so I've drawn lines to show you where the containers are running in relation to each Docker daemon. Um, at this point, uh, it then spawns another daemon inside and starts building the image. So you can see here that you have the containers that are used to build each layer are actually inside the inner container with the inner daemon. Um, and the beauty of this is that 
um, they're completely isolated. So if you're pulling images or working with containers outside on the host, you have other processes running on the cluster with Mesos. Um, this daemon and the images it's pulling and the layers and the entire directory are completely isolated. So um, the downside of this at the moment is that you have to pull all the images every time you do a build because it starts with a fresh daemon. Um, but for us, the, the time cost of that outweighed the simplicity uh, and the amount of time we were debugging all these issues. Um, we have never had to deal with any problems with overla overlapping caches or um, filling disks because this all goes away with, um, with Mesos. Uh, and then your build finishes and you have an image uh, on that slave, on the agent, sorry, um, and it pushes that to the registry of your choosing um, and that's basically the process finished. So there's a few things uh, that we'd like to, to think about solving and if anyone has looked into these issues, I'd love to talk to you because these are things we haven't solved. Um, how exactly you manage keys in the build process. Um, this is a big one, for example, with code. We have some fairly crazy um, Jenkins SCM configuration that allows us to do uh, like private repository builds, um, but it's not ideal. Um, and that would be nice to be able to ship keys with your build and have them removed from the resulting image. Um, retrying builds automatically. So for example, if you're doing a build and your slave dies, um, how you, know, you may potentially, if you want to, be able to just reschedule that build elsewhere. Given that the build is reproducible, even if the other one is still running, you can start again and, and be guaranteed that it'll finish. Um, the other one is automatic squashing of layers. So um, for anyone that's used Docker a lot, um, you can potentially end up with a lot of layers in your images, and there's performance um, issues around large, large lists of layers. Um, and this potentially is related also to the keys. So one thing that we've considered is automatically squashing down all of the layers for your image into, into one layer that gets pushed so you don't have all these separate ones. Because in reality, we have so many changes that are rebuilding the images um, that basically every build has a whole new set of layers anyway, so you might as well just squash it into one. Um, the, uh, the other thing that we want to improve um, is to make the experience for developers easier. Um, running a Mesos framework does require few parameters um, and a few bits of configuration. So we actually have Jenkins on top of this to, um, to make the experience for, for engineers much easier. Um, but maybe we could make Portainer simpler. Um, and also with some of the persistence perimeters and volumes that have recently been released, it would be really nice to perhaps be able to share the caching of layers between builds. Um, how exactly that might work, I don't exactly know, but that's something that we'd be interested to talk about. Um, yeah, so the code is on GitHub. It's fully open source. Um, please do try it out, and um, if you have any questions, let me know.